So here we have another treat for the Oldsmobile fans, a 1971 Oldsmobile 98 Luxury Coupe, the top-of-the-line Oldsmobile for 1971. And this car in 1971 stickered at over $5,000, $5,065 base price to be exact. And this is the first year of the 71 to 76 body style for these full-size GM vehicles. You can also see in comparison to the Imperial, the height of the Imperial is about an inch taller than the 98. So these 71 to 76 generation cars still were lower, longer, wider was the GM philosophy at the time. And this remains and exemplifies that. Now under the hood of this Olds 98 is a 320 gross horsepower 455 cubic inch V8 four barrel carburetor. That was a gross horsepower rating. In 72, they went to net horsepower ratings, and that motor was 225 horsepower in net horsepower terms, 250 horsepower with dual exhaust. And neither the 98s nor the 88s came standard with dual exhaust. They came standard with singles. The 71 does have unique front end styling. In 72, it changed, and again in 73, as the bumper standards evolved. And not sure if I like the 71 or two the best, but the 71 is, is a good-looking one for sure. And look at this green brocade interior with the embroidery on the top. It's just a over-the-top interior. And look at those seatbelt buckles. Those would definitely burn you on a hot summer's day. One of those memories from childhood. This is also a very well-optioned car. You can see the electric clock there, the air conditioning vents. It does have Comfortron air conditioning. On the side of the car, if you look back, it has cornering lights as well in the front. And this is an early 1971 model because you can see there's just a few trunk louvers on the trunk. And by 72, those louvers were gone. And in early 71, there are even more louvers than what is shown here. GM found that the exhaust fumes were getting sucked back in through the trunk and asphyxiating passengers in some cases. And also, if you went through a car wash in the wintertime and it was cold, that the trunk would freeze solid. Here's a closer look at the louvers. The earlier 71s had more than the three sets on either side. I think they maybe even had double the number. But Olds was going for that vertical taillight theme here, similar to Cadillac. And that vertical taillight theme persisted all the way until the Oldsmobile line was dropped. And that theme started in 1963 where the taillights were actually part of the body surface, the terminating edge of the body surface that Audi later copied in the 2000s on their A6. And you can see it's got the vinyl roof with the LS label. And this one has the tilt telescope wheel, the three-spoke wheel, and Comfortron air conditioning. You can see off to the left there. Oldsmobile's automatic climate control that com uh, controlled the fan speed, the blower motor uh, speed, as well as the doors. And look at all the belt buckles. You have separate shoulder belts in this car from the lap belts, hence the very high number of buckles that you see all over the place between the driver, passenger, and the center seat. This car also has cruise control, rear window defogger, and the night watch system, which it's basically a delay to turn your headlights off. So Oldsmobile had some pretty advanced features in 1971, and this interior is a comfortable place to be. It does have faux wood grain on the door panels, not real wood, but still quite luxurious. Toothpick A-pillars as well. The 71 to 6th generation for GM cars has this kind of semi-wraparound front glass, the toothpick A-pillars. This car has cornering lights. You can see that. Um, so it's pretty pretty well optioned. This is a two-door hardtop as well. That back glass goes down and there's no middle pillar. And for those who didn't know, the 98 was on a wheelbase that was a bit longer than the 88. This is a 127-inch wheelbase. The 88 was on a 124-inch wheelbase. And if you got the Cadillac, you even got a bigger wheelbase depending upon the Cadillac that uh, you bought. The DeVille, for instance, was on a 130-inch wheelbase. The 60 Special was on a 133-inch wheelbase. So 
the bigger, the more expensive the car that you got for GM during this time, the bigger the wheelbase. Uh, and really, a lot of the wheelbase increase came ahead of the passenger compartment. Some cool wheel discs as well. One year only wheel disc that is impossible to find and in very nice shape. Kind of a semi, I don't know what you'd call that, turbine vane lattice style wheel disc. And just for reference, the Caprice was on 121 inch wheelbase. The Electra, though, did share this 98 wheelbase. As I mentioned, this car continued from 71 to 76, although it changed its shape pretty significantly and also grew in weight, really in length, because of the bumpers that had to get added to meet the bumper standards. So by 1976, this car was weighing about 500 pounds more than it did in 71 and got heavier with less power. One more look at this green brocade cloth interior. The 98, by the way, you got the cut pile carpeting. If you had the 88, you just had the loop carpeting. So a bit nicer pile on the carpet and an overall sleek looking car. One other little tidbit of Oldsmobile V8 trivia information that most people don't know is that I mentioned this 98 has a 320 gross horsepower motor, which is about 250 net horsepower. But if you got the Tornado, you actually got a 275 net horsepower V8 in 1971. And the Tornado's V8 used a different camshaft. So it produced a bit more power than this V8, which is in the 98. You could not get the Tornado V8 in the 98 or the 88 or any other Oldsmobile in 1971. It was exclusive to the Tornado. And uh, that kind of exclusivity for the Tornado V8 continued in 1972, albeit that the horsepower rating started to drop a little bit. It's funny, this Imperial and the 98 both have the vertical taillight theme, but look at, you can see here, the height difference with, in terms of the back ends of the cars. The Imperial is quite tall compared to the 98, and Chrysler was not espousing the lower, longer, wider, certainly the longer and wider part of that, but they did not, they did not espouse the lower part. So these cars do sit relatively low to the ground. Um, but the 71 to 76 GM generation as compared to the other vehicles like that Imperial, they sit lower and they have really toothpick A pillars. They were all hard tops, whether you got a coupe or a sedan. And they're really the last of the breed of the full-size cars before downsizing started. So while I do kind of pigeonhole them a little bit, they are cool in that they're the last ones of their kind. Hope you enjoyed that video. Thanks for watching.